you crazy puppy. Uh, we're going to make, or I'm going to make, this fantastic desk. I call it a library desk. It could just as easily be a dining table with storage. Uh, there are three doors, and this desk is made with uh, predominantly figured maple. A couple pieces aren't figured all that well, but the front is uh, gorgeously figured. I hope it shows up in the pictures. Um, I'm going to cover all the steps. If you have any questions, just ask, and I hope you enjoy. Most of my projects use uh, local sawmill wood, but for this one, I went to my favorite lumber yard and uh, I'll give you guys a peek of it. It's a really great place. They have a wide selection of domestic and exotic lumber. I came home with a pretty good uh, stock of maple. I've got some eight quarter for the legs and uh, five quarter for everything else. The first step is always to lay out on the big pieces where the little pieces go and take your time so you don't end up wasting a uh, entire board. After the layout, uh, first thing I do is uh, rough cut the uh, larger stock down to size. Uh, here I'm uh, taking the uh, blanks for the legs and cutting out leg stock that uh, is approximately two by two. Once I've got the leg stock, I can uh, surface it normally on the joiner, then uh, off to the thicknesser. And here I'm going to make sure I've got uh, a square, because uh, I can run it through and have one side slightly off, but uh, I've got a good square. With the legs uh, partially milled, I can go ahead and rough cut all of the other pieces, the pieces for the top, as well as the apron. I cut those so I could know how thick the uh, apron was going to be, so I could mark out the mortises for the legs. I need to find out how long the tenons will be, so on the top of one of the legs, I'm marking out uh, the layout of the tenons so I can measure one, and that will get me my finished length of the side rails and front and back rail. The tenons intersect at a 45 degree angle. All of the other pieces, uh, top and side rails, uh, were finished normally. I uh, hit the uh, joiner and then uh, off to the thicknesser. I use the table saw to get the fourth good edge, uh, and here I'm cleaning up the edge on top pieces uh, so that I'll have something to start a glue up with. I went with a five inch side rail, so here I am uh, ripping the two sides out. Uh, you can also rip the back out, but uh, the next step is important if you're going to make the cohesive grain. Here I'm ripping one inch out of the front piece. I'll then reposition it and rip three inches out. That'll become drawer faces and uh, rails for the, uh, the front piece. And then I'll rip the second one inch piece out. So when they're all combined, it'll be uh, five inches total. One of the reasons you have to do this is if you want the drawer faces to have seamless grain. I'll cut the side uh, apron pieces to length, and now I have a complete uh, set of finished uh, wood for the top, front side, back side, left and right, and drawer faces. And some of it turned out to be really well figured, uh, though I did not buy figured wood. So I got lucky in the stack, and I'm going to make sure I use those pieces for the, uh, the show sides of the work. Each leg gets two mortises, and here I am laying them out. I'm also comparing the reveal uh, that uh, if I position the mortise there, what do I end up with? It looks good, so I'm probably going to cut them just like that. Once they're laid out, you can simply cut them. I use a bitch top mortiser. 
Now that the legs are mortised, I can lay out the uh, taper for the legs and go ahead and cut the taper and it won't interfere with trying to cut the mortise. I cut my tapers on a bandsaw, uh, just run it through on the first line, uh, tape the piece back on, run it through on the second line. It's fairly straightforward, no jig required. Uh, once I get the piece cut out, I'll take it uh, to the joiner and smooth the edges. I run the legs through on the downhill side of the taper, takes out the bandsaw marks, works really well, and it's a simple way to make tapers. Here I'm putting uh, biscuits in just to help with the alignment of the top. I'm doing the top early because it takes finish on both sides, and since I typically use three or four coats and they need a day to dry, I can start getting finish applied to the top while I'm working on the rest of the carcass. I went ahead and flattened the top by hand uh, as if I had another choice. It's way too big to go through the uh, thicknesser. I could have done it in two pieces, but uh, I did a pass diagonally uh, and then a pass uh, laterally with uh, a five and a half. Worked out fairly well. Uh, still left some tool marks, which I had to hit with a card scraper and sandpaper, but on the whole, it turned out pretty good. Squared off the edge with uh, my poor man's version of a track saw. It works pretty good, uh, but I don't use it that often. Once it was cut to size, uh, I planed down all four edges to get them uh, basically ready for finish after some light sanding. Uh, here I'm using my uh, five and a half uh, low angle plane, and that really works well with the figured wood. The first coat of finish really starts to reveal what the, the maple's going to look like. Uh, it's really beautiful and I can't wait to finish the entire thing. Now I've got that long center piece I cut out of the front rail and I've got to cut the drawer pieces out of it and the cutoffs are left over. Uh, they'll become uh, styles. I've got to use a very thin curved saw so I'm, here I'm using a, a very thin uh, panel saw, crosscut panel saw. Uh, it works fairly well. Take the cutoff pieces and glue them back in place where they were in the stack uh, so that uh, the drawers are magically cut out. Uh, works fairly well. It's not foolproof and you lose the uh, saw kerf width if you use a table saw to cut it out. Uh, but it's worth taking the time to try and make that work. Here I'm test fitting the drawers. They go back in, making sure I get the grain orientation correct and marking them where they go. Using a router, I put slots on the front rail and back rail in the exact same position. Those slots will be used to anchor drawer slides. Before we can go on to assembly, we've got to get our tenons made. So I'll cut the, uh, make the shoulder cuts here. And clean up what's left with a dado stack in, in the uh, table saw. Now, if you remember, the uh, side rail and the front and back rail meet at a 45. So here I'm cutting a 45 degree angle on the rail. While the shop's already a mess, I figure I'd go ahead and resaw some five quarter stock to make drawer parts. With the carcass dry fit, I can measure for the length of the drawer slides. 
ripping out stock to make the uh, drawer slides. The drawer slides are simple quarter inch stock that are cut to fit into the grooves that we made on the, the front rail and the back rail with, with one of them cut a half inch shorter that allows it to be recessed uh, by a quarter inch on each side so that the tongue that's produced will stick in the slot. Here are the drawer slides test fit. Uh, here's a close up of how the tongue fits in the slot. There's a secondary slide that you add that will allow you to adjust the drawers. While I'm waiting on the top to dry, I can go ahead and put the figure eight bolts in. I cleaned up the stock that I resawed into drawer sides and uh, back. And now I'm going to go ahead and lay out and cut the joinery for the drawers. First step is, for me anyway, always the tails. Uh, the tails are, are fairly straightforward, and if you end up with perfect tails, uh, it makes your joint a whole lot uh, easier to assemble. I use the two compass method, uh, mark the half pin, mark the tail, mark the tail. I cut all my dovetails at 11 degrees. I just think that that's pleasing to the eye. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's hardwood, softwood. Uh, most of my tools are set up for 11 degrees. I tilt the table saw over to 11 degrees because I'm going to use it to make the primary cut on the tails. So I've got a very simple jig that uh, will pass the, the board through. Using this, you only need to mark one of the boards because all the others are cut identically. It also helps if you make an oops and you end up joining the wrong board, they're all cut the same. I'll cut the shoulder off as well at the bandsaw. There's no sense not using them. Uh, and then it's back to manual to clean out uh, the waste uh, in the pin area. And I usually gang process them with uh, uh, whatever chisel I can get in there. This is my method, I'm not saying it's the best, but uh, I position the piece square to the bench. I place tape uh, over the line so I can uh, align it squarely uh, and with li limited gap, I uh, use a board to make sure it's square. And from there, I go ahead and mark the, uh, the pin locations. I transfer the uh, pin marks down to the uh, marking gauge line. And I cut with a little bit of an aid. I get the cut started. Then I use a square to make sure I'm going up and down. Since I'm right-handed, cutting on the right side of the line is easiest. So I do half, flip it, and do the others. Cleaning out the waste is fairly straightforward. Uh, you'll notice my method is uh, a light tap in at square, and then I'll tilt forward uh, 10 or 15 degrees. Uh, so I'm getting a slight undercut on the, uh, the floor of the dove dovetail. Once the rough cutting is done, I use a paring chisel or whatever is available and sharpest to pare down to the line uh, and then test fit the uh, tailboard. I do cut reliefs on the back side of the tails. It's not visible, but it does help the uh, tails enter. Now, for a through dovetail, you do not cut the relief all the way to the tip because uh, you can see that part. Once you get the joint together well, uh, a little bit of work with the hand plane usually cleans up uh, the, the joining of the surfaces. I'm 
Dovetails are one of those strange things in woodworking that if you go three months without making one, you sort of fall out of practice, but it comes back pretty quick. For the half blind joint on the front, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You mark the, uh, the side for the depth of the side of the drawer, and then you mark the uh, face for how far the tails are going to extend. And I generally, at, at this point, the process is the same, except you're not cutting all the way through. I cut as much as I can. Uh, again, I use a square to be sure I'm cutting straight simply because I have a real hard time with that. So I don't mind getting some help. Rather than beat our chisels to death, we'll go ahead and take the bulk of the waste out of the half blind uh, pin board uh, with a router and it works fairly well and it cuts your time uh, dramatically. So I've got a zero clearance fence lined up with the uh, shoulder line where the dovetails end up. And if you look at it from below, you can see I'm not getting too close to the line. I'm simply taking out the bulk of the waste. After the router does its thing, uh, there's a significantly less to chop out, uh, and it's basically steady as you go, uh, work your way back to the line um, with the rough chop stage. Once you have them roughed in, you can uh, flip the board, take a good look at it, and pair down to the line. Uh, crucial here is uh, getting the corners clear. I use a, a fishtail chisel, a little big for this particular job, but uh, it really helps get the, uh, the corners tight. And don't assume, go ahead and uh, measure for square and plumb. That'll help you know if you're a little, little thick uh, in a certain place or not, and you want to be sure that it's actually square because you know your tailboard is. When you think you have it, you can offer the sideboard and uh, it should fit fairly well. If not, you can go back and uh, trim as needed. I use pencil to mark uh, both the tails and the pins, uh, and you can basically keep pairing until the smudge disappears. With all of the uh, parts cut, the dovetails, pins and tails combined, I can put a quarter inch groove on the bottom. And it's here I made a mistake. I put the groove in the pin uh, so it shows on the drawer side, but I decided I would just live with it. For the uh, glue up, I'm gonna use epoxy, West System epoxy, and I'm gonna use a filler for the main joint because I really want to fill any gaps and voids in the rails to legs joint to make it pretty solid. The mix with the filler goes into the uh, mortise and the, uh, the mix without the filler is used to uh, just simply coat the tenon. Because the carcass will be complex to glue up all at once, I'm just doing half here. Uh, that way I don't have to rush when I go to do the next half. And since I'm only doing half, I'm putting in some angle braces or angle clamps at each of the corners to make sure it's glued up at 90 degrees. 
The second half of the glue up was really identical, except I inserted the uh, drawer slides. And here I'm making absolutely certain that the draw drawer slides are level with the lip uh, so that before the glue sets up. Drawer assembly is pretty straightforward. Uh, these are pretty small, so I did not glue the uh, bottom panel in. Uh, I often glue the bottom panel in if it's plywood in larger drawers, but for these, I just left it floating. Um, fairly straightforward. One thing that's worth noting is as I get to final assembly, I start using a, uh, a block with a rubber pad on the bottom to seat things. So I make less and less tool marks as I get close to done. Now this is one trick I use. I always put my drawers into the carcass while they're drying. So if there's a degree or two difference uh, in, the, in the layout, they'll end up taking that shape and I won't have uh, as much trouble uh, fitting them. Now here I'm clamping the face to be level and plumb with uh, the front of the carcass. And then I'm checking how the rest of the, the drawer lays out. But that way they'll set up and be likely to be a uh, square. This is the first coat, uh, looks pretty good. Same as what went on the top, it's Osmo. And this is the second coat, uh, it really starts to bring out the figure. After the third coat, uh, the entire piece has gone over with uh, four aught steel wool and uh, wool lube to basically smooth it out, get ready for the last coat. After the last coat, uh, you can put the drawer hardware on. I use a simple shop made jig to find the center, uh, clamp it on, mark the holes. You can use it for, you know, many a times and you have to toss it because you put too many holes in it. Hardware goes on fairly straightforward. Sorry for the shaky camera, but the uh, top goes on, is positioned, and the holes are marked. After marking the top, I flipped it over and punched and drilled for the figure eight hooks when I put the top back on. Sorry for the shaky video, but I flipped the top over and used screws to hold it to the figure eight washers. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I wish you luck on your projects. And uh, if you have any questions about this desk, feel free to ask in the comments.